Janice on the line from Tachapi. Hi, Janice. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm a teacher in a school district, and I called you actually a year ago, and you were very nice and gave me some good advice. Good. So I'm calling you again. Thank you. Uh, a little background. Right now, our, we are under Microsoft, but we're not on the cloud. Everything resides on our servers. Under right? under Microsoft is a good way to describe it. I, I see them pressing you to the ground. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but everything is stored on our local server. However, we are currently thinking about going to, or we are in the process of going to the Microsoft cloud. So that's the way our district wants to go. We're a very small district. We have 4,500 students. But our um, school is thinking about getting Chromebooks. Yay! Well, I said yay. And I know one of the reasons is because it is approved for our state testing. We can use that to take our state right. test on. They're very important. Well, Good. But I said, great. So then maybe we can do some Google Docs and get into that world. Oh, no. We won't be on their cloud. <laughs> well, and this is this has actually recently been raised as an issue. And that's um, what I wanted to know. About, yeah. Well, but you, you know, you're in a cloud, uh, whether you're Microsoft's cloud or Google's cloud. Exactly. Your exactly. student information is stored outside of the school district, and exactly. that does raise privacy concerns. Understandably, yeah. uh, I think Chromebooks are exactly right for a one-to-one -one program or a computer program in schools uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, you, you can't play Minecraft on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, they're secure. Um, they're if they're one of the nice things about Chromebooks is if something goes wrong or they stop working, they have a setting called the power wash setting, which just wipes the whole thing off and makes it the way it was when it got got there from the factory. Updates are pushed automatically, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the benefits of this is is kind of the reason why you you your school districts considering the cloud in general is. Uh, a student doesn't generally store their work on the Chromebook. They store it on the cloud, and the advantage to that is they can use any Chromebook. If they lose one, they break one, uh, they forget one, they log into their account on another Chromebook, and all their stuff is still there. Well, I understand that, but I don't think they do. They said, oh, we could use some apps. They said, you mean like Google Doc or something? Oh, no, no, we're not going to store anything on the cloud. It's not secure. All right, so I'm going to point you to uh, the, the Electronic yeah. Found Frontier yeah. Foundation is the group, and a very good group, and I support them. I donate every month uh, to them, and I believe in them. They raised this issue of the, you know, and, and really what they were very critical because they said, Google, you've got to tell people what you're doing. But they have a page at EFF.org called The Guide to Chromebook Privacy Settings for Students that you can give your school board, you can give your teachers, you can give your school district, you can give concerned parents so that they can understand what Google does keep, what Google doesn't keep, and they can control it better. But one of the benefits of using a Chromebook, just as it's a benefit of using Microsoft with a server, a centralized server, is this idea that the student's not, you know, everything isn't tied to one piece of hardware, that it's available to them no matter what hardware they use. And that's a huge benefit. So the issue really is learning how to control their privacy, what privacy they're giving up to informed consent for, from the parents and the school district is very important. The school district has got to understand how expensive it has been for them to run a Microsoft shop. First of all, everything costs a lot. And then some expert has to keep the server going. All of that is costly. Right. But either way, would you say security, if we're going to go to Microsoft in the cloud, would you say um, security-wise and what they could put up and... The, the control they could have for the child's protections about the same for both of them? Yes. I would trust Google's security maybe even marginally more than Microsoft's security. Google, Google, the guys, the people at Google are super smart. I mean, Microsoft's super smart, too. But these people grew up on the Internet. Microsoft did not. And, okay. and well, I really trust, I absolutely trust that. The issue is 
you know, that some stuff, some of the student stuff will be stored on the server. It will not, you know, so, and in fact, the EFF filed a complaint with the FTC saying Google deceptively tracks student internet browsing. Now, I disagree with this, but I understand why the EFF wanted to raise the issue. You should, I'll put links to both these articles in the uh, show notes so you can read them and provide them to your school district. Google did sign the Student Privacy Pledge, which is a legally enforceable document. I'm sure Microsoft has as well. Uh, companies promise to refrain from storing and using student information for a variety of reasons. So you should read this Student Privacy Pledge, which is at studentprivacypledge.org. Google is a signatory to this, as is, I'm sure, Microsoft. Um, the EFF says they violated that pledge. That's up for dispute. And the FTC is, or may, uh, I don't know if they're going to investigate or not, but they've been asked to investigate it by the EFF. These are all legitimate issues. If well, you... no, no, and I understand that. I just... I just thought they were legitimate issues for both Microsoft and Google, and they shouldn't be. We should be exploring both. No, well, there's two issues. There is, of course, this issue of how secure is your data. It's you, you, you know what? <laughs> to be honest, I would far trust, far more trust Microsoft and Google's cloud than the cloud that you have in the school district office, <laughs> right? Who's running that? Who's securing that? Where's this? Where's the password for that? Is it on a Post-it note on the on the monitor? <laughs> that, I mean, to be honest, these are right. the, yeah. Google and Microsoft are professionals. This is what they do. They have the best people to secure it. That's not, to me, the concern. The concern and the concern of EFF is, okay, but so Google might secure it, but are they? What are they doing with that data? Are they mm -hmm. using it for advertising purposes? I don't think so. And I think what'll happen is, and this is a, a very good process. I'm glad EFF filed this complaint. Google needs to. St respond to I don't know if they have the complaint was filed a month ago uh, Google needs to respond to it reassure people give them very clear direction about what they're doing with the data that's the concern not is the data you know is it going to be hacked far more likely that your server in the school board school district is going to get hacked than Google or Microsoft that's not an issue okay well, just one more quick question on 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 Google as well as Microsoft, we should the school should be able to set up the filters so that we can't wander off to places where we shouldn't be. Absolutely, we're absolutely. Okay. Google, you, the, Google Chromebooks are the number one selling technology for schools. Well, oh. don't you think it would be kind of silly though to only use it for testing and maybe to surf the web, web and not use the other the other stuff that's available? Right. That, that, I mean, it seems like you're working with one hand tied behind your back. Yeah, no, these these Chromebooks, I think, are a really good choice for school districts. You know, money's tight. Going out and buying a Windows or a Macintosh laptop, prohibitively expensive. Then there's the issue of maintenance, locking it down, et cetera, the cost of replacement. Uh, these are very costly programs. A Chromebook program is going to be considerably less. I don't know the actual facts, but it's at least half as expensive. Well, okay, well, thank you very much, and I shall go out and fight the good fight. Do. Not be afraid so much of what is out there. Well, and I bet you there are school districts who are using iPads in your neck of the woods. They're, that's what Petaluma is doing here, and I'm very disappointed in it because it's a very expensive, closed-source, proprietary product that I think doesn't do a very good job. The LA Unified School District bought, as you may remember, $30 million worth of these. <laughs> <laughs> and is now suing Pearson and Apple, saying these didn't work out at all. Whereas a Chromebook, I'm very disappointed. My my kids' school switched from Chromebooks to iPads this year, and I think it was. Well, a we're big... having to, we do have some iPads, not very many. So we use Dropbox to switch for, to get the information out where we need to get it out to. So. Dropbox anyway, is less know. secure than any of them. I know, I know. But... If they're worried about Google, they're. They, uh, that this is the thing. I mean, I understand. Look, kids, especially kids under 13, have to be protected. Yes, Absolutely. Exactly. And parents expect that. And it's your fiduciary responsibility to do that. But I believe that Google has a good solution, and a lot of schools are using it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Uh, and thank you for fighting the fight. You know what? This is, this is an example of why teachers are so fantastic. Because I, I know Janice is doing this probably most of it on her own. 
she wants to do this. She wants to get the best thing for her students. And uh, thank you, Janice, for doing that. I, I really appreciate it.